Um, he has, in his first full year of operations, has generated $200,000 in sales. Since since that time, he's now on a pace to grow that, that number by four times. He's, been, he's on track to, to grow that to 800,000 in 2020. He is a founder of the Senior Referral Academy, an online training course educating individuals nationwide how to start their own six-figure home business. And he's also currently writing a book about the senior living referral business as well. So without further ado, Matt and Jeff. Hi. Introduction, man, it's great to be here tonight. Really, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. I hope you get something out of this. It's been a, a whirlwind for us for the last year and a half, two years. And I just want to share some of those successes, get you to be able to relate in some areas. But I'd like to start off with a story about this little kid who really enjoyed going to see his grandma and grandpa. And he just enjoyed going over there. And you know, but the family only take him there two or three times a year, usually on holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas, those kind of things. And one thing led to another year after year, Grandpa passed away. And this little boy was like, you know, I just wonder what Grandma's doing. You know, she doesn't come out the house very often. She doesn't come to the events, you know, family functions. So he moves on over there, and the little boy goes into the house, and he noticed the house a little bit darker than usual. He noticed the house a little bit colder than usual. He noticed the house is just a little bit lifeless. She's in a bathrobe watching TV all the time, not moving, not going anywhere. Little boy leaves, goes back home. He's just a little, he doesn't really know what to do. He doesn't have much resources, didn't know, how, didn't know how to approach it to mom and dad. And was like, gosh, what is going on? And then he heard some good news. Several weeks after, mom and dad said, hey, grandma's moving. And the little boy lights up going, wow, grandma's moving. Where's she moving? Oh, it's a nice place. You have to go see it. And so they took the little boy there and the little boy went to this really huge place nice it was not dark at all it was well lit up it wasn't cold it was warm you can go down the corridors and this smelled good you smell some warm cookies coming from the kitchen it's like man it's nothing like grandma's house what's going on and it wasn't lifeless it was full of life there was activities going on and on and this little boy walks up to his grandma and says grandma it's good to see you, it's good to see you smile That little moment in history, little did I know, impacted me today. I reflect back of, the, of that little incident with my grandma, of how it moves me today. We have a senior living referral business. My wife and I, we started in September 2018. You will hear a little bit about that tonight. Not in great lengths. If you want to hear about it later, you can reach out to me. But it, it warms our hearts because we see ourselves, even though we're a referral agency, we see ourselves more as an advocate for seniors than anything. And that moves us. So we'll do pro bono work with skilled nursing. We'll reach out to others. But why this subject is so heavy on my heart in the last couple of years. I'm 51 years old. I'm kind of late in the game. I mean, you see, you heard what I've done. I was a youth director for a number of years, 15 years in the East Coast and out here and did some sales and Hill College and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and in 2018, I was driving home with my wife from LA. And I was like, babe, I wanna do something a little bit different. She goes, what do you mean? You love what you're doing. And what I was doing, I was working with a large community, assisted living memory care community. My job was cake. I was going out to discharge planners and social workers and doing lunch and learns and all the rest. And I said, it's just not enough because as, as great as this place is, looks like a resort, not everybody likes it. I want to give seniors options. I want to give them the ability to pick and choose where they want to go. And so 2018, in September 2018, we ventured out and started our business. But and the reason this is so home for me it's hit me personally in a couple different areas. One, when I was 13 years of age, my mom and dad was working with General Electric. Mom had already been there 13 years, dad was there 12 years. I remember hearing bits and pieces back in the day when you had a 25 inch TV in the living room. That's all you had, right? And so everybody kind of sit around and watch Gunsmoke with mom and dad and Big Valley and all these country shows, right? So every so often I hear these different stories about retirement coming up in seven or eight years. Well, a couple months thereafter, General Electric in Virginia relocated overseas. Mom and dad went without the job. So the new house we were in went away. We had to move. 
I didn't know it was a little kid. Why? I just knew we had to move. All the nice things I was getting as an only child kind of slowed down considerably because we had to move. And if mom and dad had a six-figure home business mentality, and we're going to get into a little bit about taking the risk, not looking back, just that piece of it, because there's a great, there, there's a lot going on with this right here. We'll get into this part here. But that's one thing. You heard about Hill College. That's where I met Myrna. Does a fantastic job, and I appreciate us you know, inviting me to speak. Hill College in 2012, 13, 14, thereabouts, closed down. Who would have thought? 12 locations. Two in Hawaii, all down, up and down the West Coast. That job is secure. I'm a senior advisor, doing really well, always in the top three, and not to brag, but Myrna will tell you, that's just kind of what I was doing. And then one day, change in the door. If I had a six figure mentality, now, if you don't know me real quick, I will go through this. If you hear a twang in the voice, I apologize, because I was born from Virginia. Uh, my kids lost it. I still have it. Now, I'm, I'm wonderfully married over here. My wife, Joseph, you haven't met her yet. Uh, that's my better half. We got married in 2018. We met in 2016. So prior to meeting Josie, I would tell girls that I would be out with, I say, look, if you really want to like me, just turn around. Let me talk to you because I sound like Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> I look nothing like him, but I sound like him. And you might like me because of what you hear me. So if you hear that, it's because I was born in Virginia. I didn't lose it. Uh, married, wonderfully married now. We have combined seven adult kids. we got six grandkids, one on the way. And like two or three, four weeks from now, on the wife, we going to Washington. I do own staff for Senior Solutions. This here, um, I don't know if you guys notice or not. But every minute in the United States, seven people turn 65. How long we've been here tonight, I don't know. Let's do the math. Every minute, seven people are turning 65. There's currently 47 million seniors in the United States today. A projection in two decades, there'll be over 70 million seniors. This is a great opportunity to help others. And I say help, the industry that we're in People look at it because it is a lucrative industry. If you follow me at all, I apologize. I'm all over social media, LinkedIn, and all that kind of stuff. That's how we promote our business. It is a lucrative business, but it is a great need for people who do not understand the process. And so we do that. Uh, the founder of Staff, uh, Senior Fur County, you heard about that. Not so much an author, I'm going to write a book, a speaker, an entrepreneur. So let's get into it. Take the risk, don't look back. This is not to show off by no means, but this is more of symbolism. This is me in my car looking back. Now, I do like fast cars. I don't like heights, okay? My wife and I, we go to Vegas. We're on the 18th floor. I hate going out to the balcony. I'm going like this. I like being up there because the view is great, and I'm always going, oh, shoot. Okay, I can't look over. Driving fast cars, I love it. But this is here more symbolism, looking back. If we didn't look back and take a risk in 2018, we would not have met this lady right here. I cannot give you her name, but we got permission to have her picture. This was our first client. This was a lady still living. Has dementia. When we met her, she had dementia living in a mobile home by herself, driving to the store all around. Her family was not close by at all. Our family lived in Arizona. If we didn't look back, we would have never met her. We were sitting in her living room. My wife will tell you. We're sitting there with her two family members. First time we meet her, we've done some things on the phone with family members. And she's there, and she forgets a lot we're talking about. And she says... Well, I have to pay you something. And I was like, no, ma'am, what we do is a free service. No obligations. We, we don't take any money at all. We get money now from the communities and all that, from businesses. We don't get any money from the residents and families. They don't sign anything with us. And she goes, 10, 15 minutes, you have to take some money. I have to give you, you're helping me. No, ma'am, we don't do that. 10, 15 minutes goes by, she leaves. I don't know if she's going to the restroom, where she's going. We continue our conversation. I'll never forget it to this day. She comes out in the back and she has these warm chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> she goes, you're going to take a cookie. And I said, we can take a cookie. That's all right. That, 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 that fits a lot of what you're doing. So I love this lady. I, I've seen her a couple times on tours. She doesn't recognize me. She doesn't know me from anyone, right? But I, 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 last time I saw her, she was having tea at the dining table with two other residents. So if we didn't take a risk and not look back, we never met her. Now, I want to do it this side of here first. Don't look back. Take the risk. <clears throat> Failures. We all have them. I have them. I don't know about you, but there's things in my life that I just failed at. I tried. 
You know, the old saying is true. We got to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and keep right on going. How many people have failed? You know, there was a guy one time, he got fired by the Kansas City Star. The editor looked at him and said, You know what? You don't have too much imagination, man. You got no good ideas. That guy today is Walt Disney. How would you like to be the person that told Walt Disney? He had, no, he had no imagination, no good ideas. That was a failure. As a matter of fact, the, the rest of the story goes on. Walt Disney, when he left there, he struggled to pay his rent. There is a report out that he actually survived for a short season on dog food because that's all he could afford at the time. You talking about living in failure. But the guy went on what? 59 Academy Awards. Nominated 59 Academy Awards. Walt Disney. Failure. Here's another one. We got all kinds of stories. This one kind of closer to home because it's closer to my age. In 51, once you get to the 50s and 60s, you start kind of appreciating some things. And this guy was 62 years old. He had $105 of Social Security. And you might know by the next thing, get ready to say who I'm talking about. All you have is a recipe. And he went knocking on doors. I got a recipe. So what, man? I got one. This one's the best. Really? Where, where are you cooking this at? Out of my house. Don't want it. And this guy goes to 100 people, knocking on doors, nothing. 200 doors, 300 doors. I don't know about you, I would have stopped at about 50. I mean, I think I'm pretty ambitious and pretty good at some things, but I got about 50 doors and people are saying, no, we don't want that. I'd be saying, hey, there's something wrong with my recipe. Well, thank goodness Colonel Sanders didn't do that. After about 1,099, somebody said yes. I'll give you a percentage of all the sales that we make from your recipe and the rest is history. Maybe you have a failure like that. Walt Disney lost his job. <clears throat> There's some here that have a great job. My mom and dad lost their job. Having a six-figure mentality will help you to, if you do lose your job, that's okay. You can still move forward. Maybe it's a, a Colonel Sanders kind of deal. You're knocking on doors and getting rejection. Maybe there's some here that they don't have a job. I went through a season like that. You got to keep right on knocking on doors. We heard about the resumes putting out. Man, that's an awesome story. Put out resumes. <coughs> She's not here tonight, so she, I'm sure she won't mind me saying long she was watching the video. My youngest daughter's getting married. Coming up in April. She wanted to be a, a 911 operator. She went through all the training, traveling to Fresno. She lives in Amber, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. She got hired only for three or four months into it, got canned. Not because they didn't like her personality, not because she didn't show up, not because she wasn't disciplined. She wasn't good on the job. Because when you talk to me, you talk to me, you talk to me all at the same time, you gotta be able to work that out. And she wasn't good at that. So what she do? She called me up. Said, "Dad, I lost my job." I said, "Man, it's okay. What are we gonna do? Hey, that's all right. Uber Eats is hiring." <clears throat> she started delivering Uber Eats. And then some babysitting job came up. She went through a period of like what six weeks, no more than eight weeks, no more than two months. And then all of a sudden, that same location in the police department said, "You know, we got a records opening. We were going to hire somebody else, but they didn't pass the background test." So we really liked your character. We liked your performance, not necessarily on the job, but by you showing up, being disciplined, showing up on work, having a good attitude. Would you take this job? She said, absolutely, I will. And, and she's, she's a prime example of a failure, but not allowing a failure to get her down. So don't look back at your failures. If you got some of those in your life, don't focus on them. Some people say we can learn from our failures. I know we can. In theory, we can I'd rather in business learn from somebody else's failures. That's going to help me, right? You laugh, you like that one. So, <laughs> success. Okay, what about success? Sometimes people are just focused so much on their own success. If you've been around somebody, you go, man, 20 years ago, I was. 10 years ago, I mean, you should have seen me. But I got, I had no gray hair in my, my hair at all 10 years ago. I was telling my wife that this morning. I was like, man, I started to look old. Why I got no hair, gray hair up here, we get all right here. You know, success. You know, I look at myself for instance, this is a little bit bragging here a little bit. The, the high school I went to became a school in 1968. Today, 2020, I still got the longest touchdown record ever at that school. I like that. 
But you know what? Truth is, who cares? You laugh, but I tell people that they look at me like, dude, it was high school, so what? I was like, actually, the truth is, to be told, I threw the ball about six, 16 yards, and the guy made a phenomenal catch and ran the rest. But I get credit for a 94 yard touchdown pass. So, but success, if you allow these two things right here, they will interfere with your mentality to establish a six figure home business. Now, I'm gonna talk about people A and people B. These people right here are the people that you don't know or they're no longer in your life. There's some hard decisions when you start saying, hey, I wanna have a six figure mentality because these, I got some people in my life right now or used to be or no longer in my life because I got different goals, I got different ways of doing things now. Or you got people on the internet or some form and they're kind of being critical of what you're doing. And I, I, I coach, the reason I say some of this is because I coach people across the nation that senior referral academy to do what I'm doing. And I hear constant excuses of people to say they can't do something because someone told them they can't do it. Or they, they go, Matt, I went and shared the vision with somebody and my relative says, oh yeah, oh, yeah I believe that when I see it. And they're going to run with that. You know, what about people B? What about the people that are in your life, that love you, that truly are around you, <clears throat> but they've given up on their dreams? And you have it. You ever been around somebody like that? That's given up on their dreams, but you haven't? It? And it's an awkward conversation. I've had people, you know, I give an example. He hopefully won't listen to the tape either. But my dad, I love my dad. My dad's coming out and for my daughter's wedding. Love him dearly. But all my life, I heard when anything and anything that went wrong, my dad would say, son, what's your last name? And I'd be like, unless it's changed, it's Stafford. And what he was saying was, and he said this even up until six months ago. Finally, as a 51-year-old mature adult, you know, I finally stayed up to my dad over the telephone 2,500 miles away, right? He goes, something went wrong. He goes, well... What's your last name? And I said, Stafford. He said, see? And I said, man. I said, Dad, my first name is Matt. You know that. You, you name it, right? He goes, yeah. I said, that means gift of God. I'm a gift. And Stafford, we're a blessing to people. I said, it's not some curse that you come out of this. And he's like, what? what? Couldn't understand that. But this is my dad, okay? And there's others in your life that may have some negative talk, some negative feeling that you got to be careful because if you're establishing a six-figure mentality, they will not understand where you're going. Real quick, money. Money and time. <clears throat> this is the risk you have to take. When we made a risk in 2018, we had no money. We had limited contacts. Had a $9.99 Wix website. My wife will tell you, we could have lost the house, the car. We could have lost it all. My wife was working. She worked in medical for 15 years. As a uh, office, uh, an officer, just an officer, an office manager. I got that police station story back in my head. As an office manager, and she worked there up until January of 2019. January 2019, she was able to step aside from that job because our income got to such a place it didn't make sense for her to commute to work and back and be gone from eight to five. We made a lot more of her being at home and as a team, but it took money and time. <clears throat> that is your level of commitment right there. When you're saying you're committed to something, it always takes money and it always takes time. It may not be a lot of money. It may be a little bit of money. But it may be a little, might not be a lot of time. It might be a little bit of time. But it always takes that right there. So what's the risk of money we understand, right? I give you 20 bucks and you don't give it back, I lose it, right? That's a risk. What's the risk in time? Well, if you got a job, you're working 40 hours a week, and you say, man, to do something else, to have this six-figure mentality, to do something out of the house, to bring some security to my family, yeah, that's, that's a risk. I'm spending 15 hours, I could be watching TV. I could be going on a date with my wife. I could be hanging out with the kids. And we slowly but surely justify it. And what happens is the relationships that we start to kind of gravitate to, which I love my wife and kids, but this kind of brings me to the thing where I've had people tell me, my mom will tell me this a lot out of, out of pureness because she loves me dearly. My mom loves me like no other. And she told me not long ago, she said, son, you got to slow down. You sound tired. You got to rest. Take some time for yourself. And I, man, resting, taking time for myself and spending time with my wife and doing the business. And so you may be thinking if you take a risk and do something, 
your relationship may suffer a little bit because you may tell your mom you're going to do something and she may say, you know what, you need to rest a little bit more. Or you tell your friend, your friend goes, man, you don't really need to do that. Are you sure that's going to work out? And you're afraid that you're going to speak that out. I'm telling you from experience, 2018 <coughs> September, we were just nothing, a speck on the floor. And I'm not trying to brag by no means, but right now, currently, we do more business than any local agency in this area. Not a place for mom, not caring.com, but anybody else in this area, they know it. We do more business. The care homes know it. The communities know it. And because we just had this desire to just go out and do it. Now, in relationships, I could have said in 2018, I'm not going to tell anybody because we don't have anything going. If you saw my business card in 2018, you would laugh. It came from, um, what's that thing on the internet? Vista Print. yeah. And it was just, it was a black line like this, a uh, gray area. And what's the Vista Print logo? <clears throat> the little V or something, the kind of yeah. triangle? I didn't know it, but we had that on there. <laughs> we, I mean, we looked stupid. We really did. I was out basking business cards. I thought they looked pretty cool. And I'm like, pretty soon I get all like, man, that's the Vista Print logo. I'm like, man, we look dumb, man. We like Vista Print uh, reps, reps or something. Yeah. So we did all of that, right? <clears throat> then reputation. Then you're going to start thinking your reputation is going to take a hit because when you start telling people and you start calling your friends, your family, whoever it is, you let them know what you're doing because that's the trick if you want to take the risk. I'm telling you. This is the commitment level, but you got to tell people. I told everybody. I got on the internet and I started telling everybody what I was doing. And that's before we got the first client. Well, I, no, I'll take that back. A couple weeks after we got the first client. So we were just barely off the ground. And we were telling people. I could have been worried about the reputation because I could have thought, I would have I tried this new venture, I'll lose my car, we lose our house, we lose everything. And 2019 doesn't look as nice. Mm-hmm. Anywhere people will think about me then, then I gotta start all over, and then I gotta go back to a community, knock on the door. Hey, can I have a job? And I mean, what would that felt like, right? That's tough. That's tough. All right, <clears throat> what happens when you take the risk? <clears throat> You realize right now, we have over 100 referral agreements from Sacramento to LA. Most of our business, 90% is done in Fresno and Clovis. I don't say that to brag, I'm saying that from humble beginnings, do the math from September of 18 until now. That's what we did, okay? And we're still growing, we're still networking. More business ideas, out of that one business venture that we started doing, I want to help more people. So you're going to see pretty soon in 2019 that we established a senior referral academy. Now we're training people across the country to do what we're doing. You know how much flag I got for that? For my other peers, the people that are doing what I'm doing in this area, they all got concerned. They all got fearful that they're going to lose business because Matt's out training people. He's coming up, what's your name? Daniel. Throw up to Daniel and training Daniel to be a referral agent. And Daniel lives in Fresno? Clovis. Clovis. <laughs> Daniel lives in Clovis. Oh my God, he's going to take all our business. So instead of them focusing on their own and what they need to do, they'll focus on what we're doing. Okay? So what happens when you take the risk? You will be empowered to dream again. Remember when you were a little kid? I remember when I was a little kid. My mom would show me kind of stuff. I wanted to be a professional football player. I wanted to be a cowboy. I don't know why I want to be a cowboy for her. But I mean, I mean, it was all the country westerns I was watching with mom and dad, right? It's gun smoke movies and stuff. But all that kind of stuff, you'll be empowered to dream again. And when you do that, it's imperative that you take immediate action. If you allow time to go from your dream to when you do something, there's going to be a great gap, a great chasm that you're not going to be able to succeed in that area because you're going to start justifying why you shouldn't be doing what you feel like your dream is because you know what? It's too hot outside. Christmas is coming. Somebody's birthday. Whatever it may be, the dream. As soon as you get the dream, <clears throat> immediate action. We put on there, we got a, uh, and you're gonna see this a little bit what our logo used to look like because it was trash. But we, we got help, we got a, someone like my creator own logo, a Wix website, we had social media, I was putting everything out there because I was taking immediate action. And I'm telling you, if you go that route, I don't know if your experience would be like mine, but for three months, I cannot tell you that it was a huge success. It stunk. I, it seems like every post I put out either have no likes or three likes. Nobody was following me. Nobody cared what I did. And I was going through all this detail, man, taking a picture, developing the, 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 
the content, either doing the video or the picture, downloading it, putting the post out, making sure it all looked good. I was, my wife would tell you, I'm meticulous when it comes to that stuff. And I was kicking it out. <clears throat> and then I go back and look at the results. Nobody liked it. Wow. Anybody see it? And so I can get discouraged, but you had to keep taking action and action and action. And after about three months went by, <clears throat> something started to click. I thought, whoa, okay, hey. I started, I, seriously, it's a true story. I started walking about the fourth, fifth month down the road from when we started. I started walking in communities, and somebody would come out. I'd be given a, you know, given a tour. I do these virtual tours, something else that people do around here. But I do virtual tours in these communities. And inevitably, somebody would come out around the uh, hallway or out of the door and go, Hey, I know you. And I'm like, and I got a little nervous, especially at the beginning, because I'm you know, newly married, especially if you're a female. I'm like, oh, where, I'm thinking, where do I know her at? And she's like, no, I follow you on LinkedIn. I see all your stuff. And I was like, really? And then it kind of went on like that. And now over the last year in 2000, probably about the half of 2019, let's say around June, I don't know exact, but half of 2019, and I never classify myself as an expert. I'll never do that. I call myself a senior living specialist. But I have had countless people tell me, they call me up out of the blue, we get business, want me to do something else with senior living, whatever. It always comes back around. I've seen your content, you are an expert. And I tell my wife that we laugh about it, I'm going, I don't see myself an expert. Now, what we do, I think I'm pretty good at it, but I wouldn't classify myself. That's taking immediate action. And then you've got to stay focused when you take immediate action. Because what's going to happen is as soon as you take this action, you're going to have the naysayers pop up, right? You got people telling you it's not going to happen and all that stuff. But then the flip side is going to happen. As soon as you take action and you try to get focused, now you're going to have somebody, Daniel sees that, what's your name? Ivan. Daniel sees Ivan's a go getter. He wants to start that six figure home business. Daniel's got something going on his own. So Daniel's going to reach out to him, try to recruit him. But maybe that is not part of your dream. So you got to stay focused on your dream. And what happens is this is the hardest part, I'm telling you. Take immediate action. Three months, nothing. How do you stay focused with that when nothing's going on for three months? Now, we got leads here and there, not much. We got a few move-ins, not many. Nowhere near as amount of what we're doing now. But it's been very easy for me to get distracted. It's been very easy for my wife not to be supportive and go, you know what, honey? You need to go back to work. I mean, I know you're trying to work, but you need to go back to work because it is running low. And I don't want to show you my bank account, but at one point, it was so far low. <laughs> it, was, it was a gut-riching kind of thing. So, <clears throat> stay focused. I want to show you that logo. I think we're running out of time here. 2018, you know we started, this is where our logo starts, well, it's the desk is cut off. Anyway, that's what our logo looks like. This is what it looked like when we first started. Look at that trash, isn't that terrible? All that is me typing Stafford, changing the font color, whatever. That essentially was on our business card with the Vista print <laughs> deal on it. I mean, I can imagine people probably laugh when I left, but I kept going out and going out and going out and handing cards and knocking on doors, and people were like, wow, okay. And then that led to 2019, just past year. Everything we do at Senior Living is one of my students is down in L.A. He's doing a phenomenal job. He's got five leads. He just started two, two and a half months ago. He's got five leads. just closed his first one two weeks ago. He's a senior for Oak County. That's what we do. Teaching students. And again, I still, got, I still get kickback from that. People that are my peers that are in this industry don't like that because what it is is such a niche industry. They don't want you to teach anybody to do this business. I want to teach everybody to do this business because there's so many. We were averaging 10 to 14 a month. I told you it was 47 million seniors in the United States. Every minute, seven turns 65. I can't keep up. This whole room could be senior living specialists. We can't keep up. It's my mission to get people trained, do it the right way, because there's some national companies that are not doing it the right way. They're just disseminating private information to 35 communities and just blasting out that we keep information private. I wouldn't place any money, that I wouldn't place my mom. We negotiate for them so the care and the costs equalize. And in 2020, can I share a vision real quick? Because this is not set up yet. Don't look for this because it's not there yet. And if it is, it's on my $9.99 Wix website. No, 
But the 2020, our goal this year, to keep everything senior living, we do senior living placement. We, I told you about the Senior Referral Academy. We consult with our CFEs on how to give effective tours and how to grow the population, those type of things. And in 2020, if you're gonna be a part of this, you can let me know and keep my name and number because it's not even close to being where it needs to be because I need to establish a nonprofit and all. But our goal this year is to establish, establish Stafford Senior Foundation so we can help seniors. It, it gets me every time because as many as we move, there's a lot that I can't help. Because we go into the skilled nursing, if you've never walked into skilled nursing, it is an experience in itself. There's some of the RCFE owners that cannot cross the threshold. And what I mean by that is not the front door. You go through the front door and you're in the lobby and that's pretty airy. Go all the way to the back. It's a different feel, a different smell, a different experience. And I deal with a lot of seniors. They'll come up to me when I just come I'll go up to them as they get to leave from the social worker. We can talk it. And they have $800 social security. Already got $1,200. And there's nowhere they can go because they can't go to an independent community because they have what's called activities of daily living. They got needs to be taken care of. And so our goal was to have Stafford Senior Foundation so we can help seniors like that. I don't care if we help five seniors when we get our foundation going and build up to 10. But I, my vision is to see this, we can help $12,000 per senior for the annual year. So $1,000 each month will be contributed to that senior. So if they're making 1,500 in SSI, that'll at least bump them up 25 and we'll get them into the category of a shared room. We share the benefits of assisted living waiver, veterans benefits, and all the rest. And we have such a passion for this. And I kind of went around the mountain a little bit, but I think it's very important that we all establish a six-figure home-based mentality. No matter what we have, you could be like my mom and dad and lose your job like that. You could be like Colonel Sanders still knocking on doors and nothing happens. I came late in the game, as I told you earlier. But I tell you what, that's the biggest freedom in my life. I'm, I'm working harder than I've ever had in my life. <clears throat> We're doing everything, but it's so rewarding. And every time I see a senior, I tell you, we help them. We help them move. I can't tell you, and I, I got a little misguided tonight, but my wife will tell you it happens every single time we move a senior from a skilled nursing, that place I described just a little bit, and move them to a care home, and move them to a, a large community, I get misguided because I know they're going to a better place. They're not going to a place of perfection. Everybody makes mistakes, but they're going to a much better place. And it warms my heart. This is who I am. If you want to reach out to me, I don't know if you want to do a Q&A, but I uh, hope that was helpful a little bit. But we, we really enjoy what we do. And I would encourage every single person here to establish a six-figure home-based mentality. You got to be able to take a risk if you never step up to the plate, you'll never hit a home run. If you never get a basketball in your hand, you'll never hit a three-pointer. I'm a sports guy, obviously. But if you don't do any of that, you'll never accomplish those things. And no matter where we are in life, it takes that kind of mentality. So God bless. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Thank you, Wanda. Thank you very much. Thank you for your finance and really enjoyed this, really enjoyed this whole perspective and, and your journey from day one. And you know, my mom was fortunate where she did have the means to do something, but I know many, many do not. So this foundation is, is a very good thing. And, uh, so, but thank you on behalf of the chapter. You can take years to wake up, wake up for a very nice property. Oh, I'm so sorry. I skipped over it. I didn't mean to, but I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, I met Myrna when I was a senior um, advisor at Hill College. She was one of my students. Came in, just super energetic. Uh, I enrolled a lot of students, but I remember her vividly because she was bubbly. She was excited about life, and she just gave her all. And uh, and she's the one who reached out to me about your meeting. And I'm so appreciative for her. You couldn't have, you couldn't ask for a better person to uh, be your director, right? Is that the position, the director of your, your chapter? Because she's just an amazing individual. And so you, said, you said something that struck me about how you, you go about sales. You said that you didn't need to go to call a thousand people because you found one Myrna that helped you do what? Yeah, 
Yeah, exactly. So what I they had this rule uh, at Hewitt College, and I do a lot of these schools where you have to make 150 calls a day. I know it seems ungodly and it's impossible, but it is possible if you get nobody in front of you. That's basically what you're doing. You're telling them, you're bing, 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 you're going off a list. And so what I would do, I would, and they would tell you this, anybody that worked there, they, they would come to me and go, man, you made 15 phone calls yesterday. Oh, I know. How'd you get four appointments? I did things a little bit differently, and I tried to tell them. I said, when I met with Myrna, I'd say, hey, you got six friends, six people to be interested in school. Everybody, this is true within business, everybody has 150 contacts in his phone. She's got somebody. If I'm talking about business, she's got six people on that phone that we can call. And so we did that. Well, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. you got 150 of them. And so you, you got that kind of thing. So in, in whatever business you're in, take that approach and getting referrals. Get the place where they believe in you. And I would do it right then and there. And Myrna will tell you, I mean, if it was appropriate, it wasn't a long day. Because sometimes enrolling somebody, it took six to seven hours because they went through an interview, a tour, a test, and financial aid. It was on golly. We tell them it's going to take 10 minutes. And it took 10 hours to see like, right? You know, we, but anyway, so we did that kind of thing. But if they're going to be there that long and they're that interested, they know some other people. Get those names if you can. Call them right down the spot. Have her call. Set those appointments up. I got a 10 and a 2 tomorrow. And if I had a 10 o'clock appointment, somebody want to come in 10? Come, come together. They both of you come together. That's cool. I'm giving my, Why not give the same presentation to both of you? You can go to financial aid differently. You can do all your debt. I can give you the same tour, right? Sit you down and give a test. That's no problem. Do two or three at a time. I learned that from actually somebody else, a friend of mine was very good in that industry, and he didn't have three or four people all at the same time. And that's where I learned that from. So I didn't make 150 phone calls. And they never got on me about it because we might it was always kind of top up. But so yes. Can I say something? Yes.